Hi, Vincent with American Mosh Fits. We're here again with Conversations with Vin. Special episode with Traverse the Abyss. Welcome aboard, fellas. What's up? So here we are at the Sherman Theater, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. We have a great opportunity tonight to learn a little bit more about Traverse the Abyss. Great band out of the local area, I believe Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yes, sir. Excellent. Let's first off, just everybody introduce yourselves. Let's get a feel of who everybody is and what you do with the band. I'm Dave. I play drums. Uh, Nick, I play bass. Eric, I do vocals. Um, Michael, I play guitar. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Jamie, I play guitar as well. Oh my gosh, that's great. Uh, Justin, I also play guitar. Yay! Hey. 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 One big happy family. So I did a little research on you guys, and I have a few questions. We always start our conversations with Ben with one question. It's great you're all here because I want to get everybody's answer to this. What did you see or hear that made you say, I want to be a musician? Mayhem Fest 2008. And what that, was it? That was uh, just getting to see the collection of bands I was listening to and the, atmosphere, the festival atmosphere. And uh, that was like the first metal concert I got to go to. Like before that was like Alice in Chains. But getting to see like Slip Not Disturbed, Suicide Silence. Mm -hmm. Suicide Silence and Five Finger Death Punch on the baby stages. Sure, absolutely. They were like the opening two bands. Yeah. Like to think, talk about that now is oh, kind yeah. of wild. So that was definitely one that stuck on. I was like, yeah, this is something that I want to do. Like, I want to do this all the time. At that moment, you're like, this is it. This is where it's at. Who we got? I just go around the room. I don't uh, like the ones that are shy. And talk. Oh, yeah, make, make them go first. I guess for me, it would be the start of everything. But definitely when I got into events unfold. Then the first band I got to see that like actually loved was the Double Wears Prada. Mm -hmm, at an mm -hmm. early Warped Tour. I forget which year. It was probably like 2000 seven eight something like that mm -hmm. um for me it was honestly guitar hero three yeah um, we get that a lot it, it really was i mean i never played any of the other ones uh, i was pretty young when it came out then i picked it up and i was like holy crap i want to like do this for real so. i've had a lot of band people in this conversation with been guitar hero is where it is. i mean it's you guys are the generation you know we just say guitar hero too for the lamb of god cover absolutely that's see that's where i heard song for the first time Scott. Uh, I would say for me, it would be my oldest brother, Jason. He played guitar, and then I always looked up to him. And then as well as listening to the Zach Wilde Book of Shadows 1 album. Like He was like my idol growing up as a guitar player. Was uh, Jason um, into metal guitar, or was he playing like different styles? Uh, he's actually really good, mm -hmm. but he doesn't really play anymore. But mm -hmm. yeah, he was just all over the place. It was just amazing to see the guitar go at that things, point yeah. for you. That's excellent. Go ahead, Matt. It's funny because being in the band with you for so long, I really didn't even know you had an older brother, Jason, because I have an older brother, Jason. And it's great. <laughs> We're learning about the family here. <laughs> Who actually, like, he's always played music through my entire life like, growing up. I, I came out late playing music, but um, he's definitely a big inspiration to me, as well as probably listening to All That Remains with uh, one of my friends, Lee Morgan. Yeah. He, uh, he definitely back in school that band got me in the metal hardcore and great band i've always been interested in music ever since i was a little kid mm -hmm. like i got my first little baby drum set when i was like three years old <laughs> but i'd have to say like first seeing something was a is a DVD of Live Vengeance, 1982, in Memphis, Tennessee, Judas Priest. <laughs> uh, and that was like the, yep, I want to do that. This is it. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. That's great. It's such a classic retro one, is the one that got you guys in the direction. That's, That's pretty neat. All right, moving right along here. Yeah. So I have some question on Scranton, Pennsylvania next. Oh, boy. Yes. So I did some research. I find the Menzingers. Motionless in white. Mm -hmm. Where do bands gain such inspiration for great music in Scranton, Pennsylvania? I think it's just even an East Coast thing. Okay. I was talking to someone a while ago about it, and they were saying how even uh, in like rock, it seems like a lot of the more West Coast rock is, even with rap, 
kind of more laid back while East Coast has more of a punch. Mm-hmm. Like even uh, like Breaking Benjamin, they're more of a rock band, but they have a lot of heavy bottom end in their mm-hmm. guitar, which even Motionless and White in their radio style is adopting into that. So I think it might be a territorial thing. I think that's an, just kind of an East Coast thing. Got it. Does anybody else want to input on that? You guys are all local boys here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I, don't know. Do, I love it. Do you feel, as a band from a smaller city, larger town, it, it's harder than it, a band from a large city, larger market? No. I think it's possibly tougher for bands in big cities just because there's so much going on while, like, spots like Scranton, like, you're either going, everyone's going to the mountain to see like Slipknot mm-hmm. or like one of the larger groups or there's local shows. There's no like intermediate without driving two hours and then two hours you're going into Reading, mm-hmm. you're going to Harrisburg, you mm-hmm. get to Philly, uh, New York City, Jersey. So I feel like uh, the bands that are in those big cities, while they have like the big stuff going on and everything, it's it's a tougher market because then even like parking More and stuff like and everything. Yeah. You could be, you could see a band at each end of the block. Mm-hmm. Like there's a comedy show going on in the actual Sherman theater next door. So it's mm-hmm. like, there could be a show here and our show. So mm-hmm. it's like, there's only a couple dollar difference. It's like, well, I'm going to go see bear tooth. Right. In the exactly. Big room. It's in the local. That makes sense. But then you got bands like edema, uh, like in California where like you kind of have the other side of that where, um, everybody knows each other because they're all from the same city. And Edema made it because of the whole corn situation. And like, all the like, they know, like, when we were talking to Edema, like, they know, like, all the local bands because mm-hmm. everybody hangs out at the same spots. Mm-hmm. So, our local metal spot would, I would say, be the V spot. Definitely. And it's kind of like as if we had, if Lamb of God was from here, that's like their spot to hang out. So, mm-hmm. like, we would go hang out with Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. So, like, we don't really have that necessarily because those bands moved away from this area. Sure. I believe Motionless moved to that area of California, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Or at least Chris did, I think. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's kind of goes both ways. Yeah, my, it makes sense. Mind. So, um, here's one of the things I really noticed. So, I do, when I do my research for the bands, I do a lot of YouTube research. And your entire band has excellent stage presence and crowd control. It's not, you know, usually you just get the lead singer and the lead guitar, but you guys as a whole, every single, I've watched everyone and you guys all have it. So my thought is, where does it come from? Where, because again, it's usually just one individual for a whole band to have it. It's very mandatory unique. shock therapy. That's how you do it right there. Shock them up. It's, it's, it is completely forced. It's like the dog shock collars, except they're on our, Bands pay it's attention, like, invest in shock collars, and you will have unity and crowd control. I even teased Shitty here for his yeah. first show. Yeah. Because I saw him play in, in his other groups, and he's usually really laid back on stage. Sure. And I'm like, that's not how we do it, dude. Like, yeah. you got and he, the first show, he was just let it out. And if now, you are making that something for your band, you guys are absolutely nailing it. I'll tell you that because, again, I've watched, uh, you know, multiple live performances, and you guys all, again, as a group, you really have it. It's so. that. The energy is synchronized sure. and it's reciprocated between us and then pushed further and maximized from the crowd. Mm-hmm. So like even if it's a slow show, we could have fun with each other on stage, just the energy and the group together. But then when you have that crowd matching it or pushing it above, then that even gets us going more. Sure. So it's just every it's everyone collectively releasing at the same time so let me comment on Giggity. the crowd there as you're there so one of the things um i like to talk and you guys are a prime example here tonight is um back-to-back home turf shows right pretty much right are you more excited or more nervous mm. Shows a show. Shows a show. No it's difference like, if it's home turf yeah, or we're out in the middle of nowhere that we've never been. Yeah, we uh, I depends because like hometown, we try to do something special for them, so we'll try to work in like an an older song versus like in new markets. It's trying to think of like okay, like 
what is our what's our appealing songs what sticks mm-hmm. out how could we blend these what's a good starter okay we can't if we do that song we can't do that mm-hmm. unless it's the opener any other place in the set it doesn't work sure no that makes <laughs> failure sense. um so it's kind of grabbing each thing has its own but uh all in all it's still a show and we're gonna do the same if it's a festival to a hometown a smaller hometown gig or anything we just kind of Maximize the energy, Mm -hmm. release, Mm -hmm. and have a good time, make memories. All right. Well, that makes sense. All right. So you're up. Me? Oh, boy. Yeah, he doesn't. We're going to keep going on YouTube here. I've watched from clubs to festivals one of the most unique things I've seen a band do in a long time, which is bass in the pit. That's what I call it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, It's it's amazing because, again, (laughs) we watch so much bands and footage, and to see something that just stands out like that, that makes you go and stop and say wow it's amazing so give us the story give us some feedback um well thank you and uh well i mean just kind of going back to what he said i mean when i first started with this band i mean i was as stiff as a pencil mm-hmm. like i i was terrified to move and <laughs> and the <laughs> other bands i was in um i i didn't even think of moving like that and uh no these guys really kind of pushed it sure and just watching them go just kind of kept inspiring me like one day I just kind of did it and I was like, holy crap, I could do this. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I see them get off stage all the time. So I'm like, I, I want to do that. Like, oh, my God, I'm going to do it. So I got off stage and then eventually I was like, the pit looks pretty fun. Let's go for <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, so Let's I was like, I mean, I'm just going to send it. I mean, you, you never know unless you don't try. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. At uh, incarceration, I um, led a circle pit around like this massive tent. Yeah, and like I'm, yeah. I mean, massive. It was. We were there filming that. Yeah, it, yeah. it was a big one, and uh, I remember getting back up on stage. I actually like passed out after that performance because <laughs> it was hot. We were running on stop. I was like, and I smoke. I mean, don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> it no takes smoke. a toll on you. <laughs> so yeah, no, I mean, it's just you know practicing it, keep playing shows, and so it here's just my comes question. Yeah, 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 we gotta work out a little more. But uh, on camera. Mm-hmm. It appears when you go out there, it's very well received. Mm-hmm. You're obviously the real person out there. So tell us, is it well received? Are you getting groped? Are people going at the guitar? <laughs> what is? What are you getting when you hit that crowd? So usually it's um, everyone just jumping around. And then eventually I hear it. Every single time I hear, oh, shit. <laughs> like, oh, my God, someone's here. And um, as soon as that happens, <laughs> I know, yeah, that. there's usually – like a few people next to me that like are standing there like almost like a bodyguard and yeah. it's like making sure no one runs into me uh-huh. or like knocks me over and stuff um so it, it's always really well received people always usually come up and they start headbanging with me oh yeah i always see phones out um there was one time or probably two times i got knocked on my ass but just kind of keep get up and keep part for the course That's what we yeah Hey, great. Continue on with it. It's a fantastic item. I mean, the people <laughs> love it. That's what it seems. Yeah, no, it's fun, too. It's a lot of fun. Very cool. Uh, one of the things that I really want to ask about is on all these music videos. Very high quality. Every, every single, now, I'm not talking about the live play. I'm talking about the actual music videos that you guys made for song. Where, how, why for this high quality production of a video for what would be considered a smaller band? Navro Studios, Eric yeah. and Sarah. Put the plug in, go. Oh, yeah, Eric and Sarah from Navro Studios, husband and wife, both mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. But uh, he does audio production, mm-hmm. and she do, she does video, and he assists with the video as well. So okay, it's a it's a nice kind of double package. You could work in, go and record a track, and then line up a music video to correspond right with your single because everything's real fast anymore. Mm-hmm. Microwave mentality music. Mm-hmm. I felt. When I watched older, newer, it didn't matter. It was still high quality, top of the line. That would be uh, Michael Bellardi did the dead weight one. Uh, Cat Bischak did a couple of the old ones for failure and second place superstar. Um, Steven Ruther did the one for Blink. So there's a couple of our friends. We usually had a shop- lot of live footage, correct? Yeah, because it's mm-hmm. we try to get video to capture actually mm-hmm. you guys did i think the, one of the best jobs of capturing thank you all thank you all. Uh, from, david david our from owner. blink for that. from a uh, blink blink was like the uh, the video for the while it's like yeah. yeah this captures it but not really mm-hmm. fully and then just getting the shots from ink we were like oh man 
Like, this is great, like, right in the mix of everything. Our owner knew it from the beginning. He was like, listen, we got to be, here's our schedule. Here's where we got to be. These bands, you guys were on the list, top of the line. So, definitely. We that were was uh, even louder. We went to the pool party. Yeah. We went to the spot to smoke a cigarette and smoke a little. And we yeah. were just like, hey, guys, we play tomorrow. If you guys are we're, we're, you figure you're here. And yeah. they were like, what ba- Yeah, we have you on the schedule already. And we're like, this is this is wild. Cool feeling. I am uh, Michigan Metal 2024 Traverse the Abyss. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I am a big, big fan. I am uh, definitely pushing. Um, a couple more questions. So we are huge Lamb of God fans. We have probably more Lamb of God footage on American Mosh Pits than any of the other bands. So we want to know, laid to rest, you guys. It's hard with a cover, especially when people really like the band and they're in the industry a little bit. Uh, but you guys nailed it, hundred percent. We love it. So tell me the story. Why did we choose it? What was the direction? Tell me the story. Probably since twenty seventeen, they've been telling me and Mike like, oh yo, you guys should do a Lamb of God cover. Mm-hmm. And it was the problem. And the, what took the while is we just could never agree on what song sure so many good there's, ones. there's a, so many good ones and then yeah. it's different aspects or ideas onto it and i think ultimately we want to do what was the most popular and referring mm-hmm. back to uh earlier conversations guitar hero too sure so you have everyone around this age group that was right back to six by all the remains uh the light that blinds by shadows fall mm-hmm. he's in the heart of and stuff like they're all from those they games they nailed it on that yeah soundtrack for that just game, being like, for sure. being like 12 13 14 yeah. years old i'm like that was my exposure to a lot of these groups sure. that i still listen to and like so uh it was kind of taking a word from our fans and mm-hmm. paying, doing one for uh a band that we enjoy adding a little bit of a twist to it slowing parts down letting mike do dance all over the track a little bit what about was it so much this was the song we wanted to do and and this was the band we wanted to do now do we play it just the way they played it or do we put our traverse the abyss twist on it when you cover a song like that what is you gotta put your own twist on it okay i feel like no matter what it is you have to have your little bit of flair into it whether it's just an extra cymbal hit or altering a part slightly Mm -hmm. i think that's what makes it unique in you that didn't really come till the end too. I remember we were kind of playing it straight for the first while. To just like try a, to be track list. Maybe like a do week it. before okay. the studio, we added in that little choppy breakdown part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just I think a we little were bit. talking about the uh, the harmony because we have the three guitars. I mm-hmm. think that was like the main thing we were gonna originally do. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say, um, Mike with his solo too. I mean, coming up with that. That was great. I it's think good. I came up with it in the studio. Did I come up with it yeah. in the studio? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The that, studio on the spot. Yeah. that was the first take ever. For the one that <laughs> one shot is what shot yeah, he said. Give, he, he looked at it, he said, "Give me the fucking guitar." Wow. <laughs> no, I planned, but uh, no, he, he he was dancing. Here, tell us. Yeah, uh, I love his voice. I'm not I'm not good at solos. I don't like doing solos. Why? The moment somebody says it's a solo, I don't even want to do it. If you call it a guitar part, I'm cool with it. Why but, is that? I don't know. I psych myself out, and then like I don't know. I don't think I'm good enough for solos. Okay. But like. It's a little humbleness. I don't think. I don't this know. About way that. Too I don't know about He's that. Great. Um, don't be humble. The solo is fantastic. Thank you. All right. From uh, guys that watch a lot of solos, it's fantastic. All right. Um, so, like with solos, I, I, I. Like, I don't know. I would love to play like Ingve and like, you know, like all these crazy shredders and everything, mm-hmm. but half the time. It, people call it what uh, nonsense shredding or what nonsense it? shredding. Yeah, Jeez, I haven't heard this term. Oh, really? No, go. Yeah, like where people are just like, it's, they're just shredding and like mm-hmm. there's no point to it and stuff. And like, I get that from a lot of stuff. And like, I also don't like when songs have so, like, for example, in a, in a structured song where you mm-hmm. have verse, pre chorus, chorus, etc., you'll have the bridge, which is like a kind of different, unique style to the song that doesn't really fit but it does fit and like that makes sense Mm -hmm. but a lot of times with like solos or guitar parts a lot of people want to show off and be flashy or whatever it may be and like not that the solo doesn't fit it's just you're 
it seems too flashy. It's different than what the yeah. song and the band's doing. And I always try to like do it where like something fits a little bit better. But typically when I do that, it turns out to be like pretty easy mm-hmm. and not on the flashy side. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, like, you know, like maybe I should do something flashier. Absolutely. But, like, but like I don't want to because I feel like it doesn't really fit the song. So like I try to do my best to make something fit and flow with the sound as opposed to oh my god did you hear that solo it ripped like i'd rather it flow so like the hardest thing with the lamb of god was we all value that band uh we all appreciate them and trying to add a solo to a song that doesn't have a solo Mm -hmm. with a great guitar player is kind of like should i actually try doing this (laughs) right 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 and like that's like it's like a kind of nerve-wracking absolutely and then like after it was over and done with everybody says that they like it and it's good but for me it's more or less like is it like Mm. is it worthy enough and like you're doing fine i I wish i could like go to them and be like hey what do you think of this and is it worthy enough and like should i not have done would you be ready for you know (laughs) they would say you know it could go either way there yeah no that's cool Mm -hmm. mm-hmm Good deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, you guys, this is really great. I really learned more about Traversy This and Overknown, and I'm sure our fans are gonna love this. So, what we want to do um, as we wrap it up, we notice you wear the Budweiser hat on stage all the time. <laughs> so, we would like to at this point change that all and right. make it an American Mosh Pit awesome. hat on stage oh, from yeah. now on, please. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, so, yeah. All right, gentlemen, with that, let's get a horns up. Traverse the Abyss, Conversations with Vin, big night at the Sherman Theater tonight. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you.